Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, you're very welcome to this, well, I want to say spring edition of the CSR uh, evening. It does look a bit springy out here with the, um, um, the daffodils <coughs> and the snowdrops just on their way out. Um, a great evening ahead. First of all, Lachlan Jardine, uh, who is going to talk about thermodynamic systems and and then Professor Richard Horne is going to talk about space weather. You don't really think of there being weather in space but of course there is and it's very topical as people are sending up more and more satellites. Uh, the usual rules of engagement uh, for those of you who um, aren't regulars uh, then please when we get to the stage of questions um, may we ask that you do not use the chat function but rather use Q&A uh, and I will read out your written questions or raise a hand. Um, if you would like a, a moment of stardom, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, and Valerie Anderson, who is behind the scenes controlling everything, including what I say, um, <coughs> will uh, get in touch with you directly and bring you in so you can ask your question on screen. I, don't, I also understand that we have uh, a school in Russia joining us this evening. So um, you're very welcome and thank you for staying up so late. Well, let's kick off with uh, Lachlan Jardine, <coughs> who uh, has been working at the Whittle Laboratory and did his PhD there and now works for MathWorks, but is one of our prize winners. Uh, as many of you will know, we have a PhD uh, awards competition, uh, which is uh, pretty competitive. We have only 10 winners out of nearly 200 uh, applications. So uh, they're a pretty classy crew. And um, I always like to say when talking about jet engines, particularly to nervous travellers, that you do understand that the turbine blades are going round in a temperature well above their melting point. Um, and so that's cooling, which is what Lachlan's been working on, is rather important, but probably better if I shut up, which is what generally people want uh, of me, uh, and ask Lachlan if you'd be kind enough to tell us your story. Sounds good. I'll just first of all check that you can see my screen correctly. Yep, fine. Okay, perfect. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you're all well. Um, I'm Lachlan, and today I'd like to provide an overview, really, of my work in improving performance of thermodynamic systems. Um, most of this work, most of the research was done during my PhD at Cam the University of Cambridge. Uh, and then the application side was during a EPSRC Knowledge Transfer Fellowship, uh, where I applied this research to jet engines with, in partnership with Rolls-Royce. And currently, I'm working at MathWorks, uh, analyzing a wide variety of thermodynamic systems. OK. so. I'd like to start with the big question that is facing um, industrial power systems. And that is, how are we going to achieve decarbonization? What I'm showing on this graph is the decarbonization roadmap from sustainable aviation. Uh, and on the vertical axis, you can see carbon emissions uh, over time with various different mitigation strategies. Now, the key point is that there's no easy option. There's no silver bullet, for instance, no one single strategy that will do it. And what's required is a combination of technological, operational, and market-based measures in order to just achieve net zero. Um, there are two aspects of this that I've been working on. And I'd like to sort of put them out as food for thought this evening. Um, the first one is, I guess, more the research focused on how can we link performance analysis across all the different scales of design. And the second part, I guess, is more application of that research, which is how can we make domain expertise um, available to make informed decisions? So for instance, if you're trying to optimize your operation or your policies around the market, you'll need to have a good understanding of the technology behind it in order to run these analysis, but you're, you're not going to be in domain expertise in thermodynamic systems. So there are two areas. So 
Imagine you're a component designer. What I'm showing here is the high pressure turbine blade. That's not particularly important. Just imagine it's a component of a much larger system and you're tasked with improving its performance. Now you might go about that by doing some sort of design sweep analysis and work out some um, optimum uh, jobs are good. But now imagine that you're designing that component to maximize the system's efficiency. Perhaps even you're trying to design this component to maximize this system in operation. How would you do this? Now that, that's a much harder question to answer. Um, and because either you're in the component level, having to have detailed knowledge of what the system operation is going through, or you're at the system level with a detailed knowledge of the physics being applied in this component design. So this just re reinforces the two points I want to cover really. Uh, one is we've got various different scales of our design and different things that people care about along the way. How can we link performance all the way through that? And then if we're thinking about operation or uh, policy, how can we bring this detailed physics knowledge up to the surface to make informed decisions? Okay, so first bit I'm gonna tackle is sort of my PhD research, uh, which is how can we link thermodynamic performance across scales? So to do that, I'm gonna dive right in to the problem. Again, high pressure turbine blade shown here. And as Mike was saying earlier, the uh, blade is cooled because the temperature in the mainstream going over the blade is several hundred degrees higher than the melting temperature of the uh, wall here. So we've got some heat transfer that's going from the mainstream through to our coolant feed. Uh, and the question I'd like to pose is how does this local heat transfer affect the overall performance of this system? Okay, so how could this be solved? Well, what, what in essence we're trying to do is we want to put a box, some sort of control volume around the component of interest, and we want to relate it to a much smaller box. It, it could be around a cooling hole, it could be infinitesimally small, um, but we want to relate this small box to the overall box. Now in thermodynamics, in order to do that, you need what's known as a generalizable method. And there are two such methods available. One is based upon entropy, uh, or exergy, you may have seen it in other, applied in other fields. Um, and another method is based upon having access to only an ideal turbine. And what these are doing are valuing the inlet flow using different devices. So here you're valuing it by both having access to an ideal turbine and an ideal um, heat engine. And here it's just a turbine. Okay, so when I was uh, presenting this to Rolls-Royce, um, I asked the question, which method fits with industrial experience? Um, and John E. Backer from Rolls-Royce Corporation uh, gave me this quote, which is, I've spent 20 years being told by academics that I have access to reversible heat engines. And as a high pressure turbine designer, I can assure you that I don't. And what he's saying really is that he's got, a, as a turbine designer, a certain ability to extract work. So force over a certain distance. And that's from pressure being higher on the one side of this airfoil than the other. He doesn't have an ability to extract work from differences in temperature. So in this case, where you're extracting, uh, first of all, through a turbine, and then secondly, through a, a heat engine, he's saying he does not have access to this second component. So, when we go back to um, this picture and we say, how can we relate this small control volume to this larger control volume? Well, 
we can do that using our devices. We can say that we're going to analyze this system using just a reversible adiabatic turbine, and that allows us to link this little control volume to the overall one. When it comes to my work with a, in my knowledge transfer fellowship, what I was looking at is how can we predict the performance of a new design, a new engine? So we might have some old engine, some former engine, and we might have some rig data that we're collecting from some experiment. And we can use that in order to characterize the physics and then map that to where we would expect a new engine to sit. And we can do that with both the value itself and the confidence that we have in that value. So here we, we're using physical models to capture component performance at a higher level than the component is at. So we're using um, models to transfer knowledge between different scales of design. And this leads on to the second point that I wanted to discuss in, is that how can we make this knowledge available to non-domain experts? In this particular case, I used a model of a design and this fits into what my work now is with MathWorks. So it's about putting models at the heart of your design cycle. So you could be doing various different aspects of your design um, with all centered around a common model or common modeling framework. Uh, I have one quote from, but well, it's attributed to Buckminster Fuller, but uh, I'm not sure how accurately attributed, um, which is you cannot change how someone thinks, but you can give them a tool to use, which will lead them to think differently. And that's generally what I've tried to do. We've, uh, how would you improve performance? We've got now a theoretical framework that we can use to link all these different scales, and we can use models to make domain expertise available to non-domain experts. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's my talk. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Luckily, that was great. Thank you very much. Um, what's attractive is that the kind of thing you're talking about is applicable across a wide range of fields. It's not just jet engines, is it? Absolutely. The thing, of course, that engineers and designers worry about all the time, how to make that link between the component and the overall system performance. Um, we've time for one or two quick questions. If you'd be kind enough to take your slides down, Lachlan. Ah, yes. I can stop sharing. Okay. And so um, maybe John, you've got your hand up. John Cook, yep. please, if you'd like to. Interesting talk, um, Lachlan. Um, I used to work in um, the metallurgy department in Cambridge, and half the yeah. people there were working on turbine alloy design. Um, and since, I, as Mike was saying, I'm no longer in the first flush of youth, this was some time ago. And uh, turbine design is, is quite a mature subject now a lot of a lot of jet engines have been built do you think there are big um, advances to be made uh, still um and is there a way to quantify that I, I don't know what the numerical efficiency of these engines is at the moment that's you do and, and how much of an improvement can be made to them absolutely there's, there's uh, big changes coming i think oh uh, the the main changes are at the system level, in, in my view, uh, with integration of the propulsion system with the airframe itself. So traditionally, you've got some way of generating power and some way of generating thrust, and they're connected by a shaft in a jet engine. Um, so basically, you've got your power unit that's driving a big fan. But with electric aircraft, you can decouple this, which means that you can start putting your fans anywhere you fancy within reason. So there's aerodynamic benefits that you can get from distributing your propulsion around your airframe. So there's 
I, th I think there's going to be new challenges um, that are faced in that regard. Gosh, that's jolly interesting. I hadn't really clocked. I've been a bit sceptical about electric aeroplanes, but they are flying, aren't they? And as you say, if you can distribute the power around the, the airframe, that gives you all sorts of new opportunities. Yeah, so electric aircraft are not going to solve large aircraft, um, mainly because kerosene is quite a good fuel for flying. It's, it's very power dense. Um, however, you're seeing it for urban air vehicles or small regional flights. Uh, electrification is definitely coming for that area. Excellent. Well, exciting times and congratulations on some very interesting work. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mike.